Hi, my name's David Kyle, and I've been attending Lakeside for a little over a year now. My mother was um, uh, 14 years old, and she kind of fell in with the, the wrong crowd. Uh, my dad continued to uh, live the, the wrong sort of life. He fooled around on my mom a lot. My uh, mother eventually left my father. I was at school in the cafeteria, and my dad and an uncle uh, walked into the cafeteria and grabbed me out of the cafeteria, and they already had my brother and sister in the car and uh, loaded us up and, and took us, and we were uh, moved to um, Arkansas. He hid us from my mother in Arkansas, and we were there for uh, a number of months. Um, my dad's family were, they were really uh, bad people, um, uh, abusive, uh, alcoholics. My mom eventually found us. We were, I remember um, out being outside in the yard uh, during the summertime, and my mom pulled up with uh, her uncle in the car. Um, I didn't recognize her at first, and she scooped me up and threw me into the car. Well, they followed us to a gas station, and um, as my mother was getting out of the car to put gas in, um, one of my aunts uh, jumped on my mother with a knife and was trying to kill her. They were rolling around there in the parking lot. And I remember crying and screaming for my mother, and. Uh, the police pulled up and, and broke up the fight and we left. We went back to Colorado and my mom, she was she was a beautiful woman, but the only job she could get was working in a bar as a go-go dancer. And I would uh, pick the kids up from school and uh, go to the bar and they would hide us in the back room of the bar while my mom worked out front. And they kept us there till about one or two o'clock in the morning. And one of the customers uh, offered to marry her and give her a place to move into. So we moved in with him. And uh, he was a, a pretty violent man, and she called my dad, and uh, back where they were, where they were living, and uh, uh, they made a deal. He would give my mother money for bus fare uh, to come back uh, home if um, if she would live close by and allow him to see us. So she agreed to that. But once we got to Arkansas uh, in Little Rock, my dad's family um, were there waiting to meet us. And it was there that they uh, took us from our mother again. That was um, in June of 1969. I was uh, eight years old, and that was the last time I'd seen my mother until uh, December of 1987. It, it was at this point in my life, there was nobody who could convince me that there was a a good and loving God. I just, I just couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I uh, joined the army in uh, December of 1979. Um, it was everything I needed, everything I uh, looked for in a life. I found uh, discipline, care. <laughs> uh, I remember being at basic training, everybody hating and talking bad about the drill sergeants. I loved them. <laughs> They, they put us to bed at night. They got us up in the morning. They made sure we ate. They cared about our physical fitness. The Army was an environment that I just thrived in. I loved it. I, I dedicated my entire life to it. It, it became my God. Um, years later, in uh, 1984, after I returned from a deployment in Germany, I uh, met my wife, um, fell in love. Uh, we got married that uh, later on that year in December. Eventually, we would have nine children together. I was sent to a school in Idaho for a month, and and um, while I was there, um, there was an older soldier uh, there with us, with the rest of the students, and he kind of stood out from everybody else. Number one, because he, because he was quite a bit older, but he was also different uh, because when we sat down in the evening or sat down for our meals, he would pray before he would eat, and so we would make fun of him. We would mock him for praying over his food and uh, mock him for praying before class and after class. And I, I was particularly hard on him. I, I hated Christians. I hated Christianity. Any chance I got an opportunity to make fun of Christians and, and make fun of their God, I would do it. And, and I, would, I was dishing it out pretty heavy to this guy, and he, he just kept taking it. I, I couldn't understand why. Why he could be so kind to somebody who was being so mean to him. He said he'd really like to pray for me. I was, I remember being repulsed by the idea that somebody would think I would need prayed for. And 
When, when the course was over, he gave me his name and number and took mine and said he wanted to stay in touch, but I had no intention of ever, ever talking to him again. That was in January of 1994, I remember it. And then I went back home, went back to my military job and career and family, and everything was pretty much the same until May 27th, 1994. Whoever had used the car before me had left the radio on a Christian radio station. And a man was reading, he was quoting the Bible, and at the moment I turned the radio on, he, he was at uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When I heard that, I, I died. I'd been denying God my whole life. I hated him. I hated Christianity. I hated everything it stood for. I'm so and, and, and God in his mercy allowed me to hear those words and to recognize that Jesus Christ is Lord, not David Kyle, not me. The army isn't God and I'm not God. Jesus Christ is God. And as I was sitting there crying out to him to forgive me, I, the weight just lifted. It's hard to describe. You have to experience it to know what I'm talking about. I went home and my wife knew something was wrong and something big had happened because I was showing up in the middle of the day without calling. Um, so I, I came into the house and I was excited. I, I told her that um, about turning on the radio and hearing those words from the Bible and she looked at me and smiled and was just like, oh, I'm really glad for you. And uh, I, I uh, called my brother, you know, we, we were really close and we had grown up together. Both of us used to make fun of Christians. And I, I called him up and I was excited to share with him that, that we had both been wrong, that God was real, Jesus Christ was true, and that he could be forgiven for his sin, just like I had been forgiven of my sin. And, and so I shared the gospel with my brother and he thought I was just joking. He offered to have some uh, officers show up and pick me up and take me in and put me under observation for 48 hours. I went back to work. I started sharing the gospel with uh, those in the military and those who I worked with. And um, I lost my position in the military. I had started my own business on the side. We had lost that. I started losing everything. God was removing from me all the things that I thought was important. We had filed bankruptcy. I'd lost my business. We lost our home. I used to make fun of people who worked at Burger King, and I, I couldn't do that anymore because I applied for a job at Burger King, and I was turned down. Um, I remember calling the manager back and, and crying and pleading with him and begging him on the phone to give me a chance to work at Burger King. And it was through the course of that that I, I learned to put my faith and trust in God. God saved me, an undeserving sinner. God can save anybody. So if I would give any advice to anybody, it would be to look to Jesus, repent of sin, and put your faith and trust in him. He saved me. He can save you.